In this video, you'll learn how to bring basic borehole data into Groundhog. We're going to work from a series of typical CSV files. Um, we've got four here. We've got color, which contains the location information for the boreholes. We have a geology table, which contains lithology information down the hole. And we also have sample type data and a strength test. This data is all just fabricated for the purposes of demonstration. Let's go ahead and take a look in these files. So, standard CSV will open in Excel or you can use a text editor. The first line of the CSV should be the column header, followed by several rows of data. For this column data, each row represents one borehole location. And we have four key fields. We have this field called name. The names of the fields could be anything. We'll map those later when we bring them into Groundhog. But in this case, the idea of the borehole is called name. And we have an X or easting and a Y or northing in the local grid coordinate system. And then we have a ground level field here in meters. Let's take a look at the geology. So again, this opens up into spreadsheet view. The key for the data is this column here, borehole ID in this case. Again, it could be called anything. The name isn't important, but you need an ID field with matching IDs between the collar file and the geology file. Then we have from and to fields, which define the geological intervals. These are depths in meters down the hole from the top of the borehole. So they all start at zero for each log. In this particular example, we have two descriptive fields, one called lithology, which is a list of basic lithological codes down the borehole, and a longer description for each interval as well. You could have as many columns as you like here. We also have this samples table. So you might have sample information you want to bring in. And again, it's a header with an, an ID field of some kind, a from, a to, or a depth field is fine as well. In this case, they're, they're ranges or intervals. And in this case, we've just got a simple column called sample type, but you could have other information in additional columns here. Again, this is just fabricated data to show you the mechanism for how to bring the borehole data in. And finally, we have this strength test table. So this is just to give you an example of how to bring uh, numerical data in, for example, and how to display that. So again, the top row is the header information, followed by the data in each row below. This column here, again, is the ID field. Could be called anything. In this case, it's called ID. And then we have a depth value in meters down the hole. And this completely fictional test called strength, which is just a numeric test. Again, you could have as many columns of test data as you like here. So let's go ahead and bring that into Groundhog. So borehole data sets appear within the tree here under location layers. But to get the data set started, I'm going to go in through the main menu import option. And there's an option here for borehole data. This can import from CSV or something like tab delimited text as well. But typically we'd work with CSV. This opens up the import screen and there are three tabs here. There's one for the color information, one for the geology, I'm on for the borehole survey if you have a deviation survey. For this import, I'm just going to start with the collar. So we choose the file that contains the data, browse to the folder that, that contains the CSVs, and select collar CSV. 
When I open this up, I get two panels. The first panel we see is the mappings panel, which we'll come back to in a moment. But if I just switch to the second tab, data, this will show you a quick preview of what was brought in from the CSV file, just to check visually that that's coming OK. But the mappings is the key panel where we tell Groundhog the meaning of each field within the spreadsheet. So down the left hand side are the names of all the fields found within the file. And then Groundhog then gives you this second column called alias, which is where you map the fields to key fields within Groundhog itself. So if I click on one of these pull down arrows, you can see I have a number of mapping options. I can import the field as is, which is the default. So that will import it with the same name as in the file. I can exclude a particular field from the import. And then below that are a number of key values that Groundhog treats in a special way. So you'll see three are highlighted in red here. That means for this particular type of import, the collar import, these are mandatory field mappings. And we have location ID, which is the borehole ID. And we have X and Y. So to bring a borehole collar file into Groundhog, at least as a minimum, you need an ID and a position, X and Y, or Easting and Northing. So I'm going to go ahead and map those. Map the X. They just happen to have the same name in the file and within the Groundhog system here. They could be different. And then we have this fourth column here called Level, which we know is a ground level. So we can optionally map that to the Z field in Groundhog. When you're happy with that, click OK and give the imported data set a name. This adds the imported boreholes to the tree. And you can see if we expand these, there's not a lot of information. We've got three boreholes, balls one, two, and three. And we have the geometry in X, Y, and Z. And any additional attribution is also cloned or mirrored into here. So if you have things like project name, drill date, etc., they can be brought in as well. Let's have a look at those on the map. So I'll open a new map window. And I will add the Keyworth Borehols layer. And I'm going to hold control and also bring in topographic base map. If I highlight the Borehols layer in the layer control, and click zoom to extent that will bring me in to the approximate extent of that layer. The topographic base map is on top so I'm just going to reorder those to put the boreholes on top and also decrease the transparency. So you can see here these are three fictional boreholes around the British Geological Survey site in Keyworth in Nottingham. Um, and we can see their locations. But there's no real data attached to those at the minute. So we're going to bring in the geology, the samples, and that strength test. So if we right click on the folder itself in the tree, we have this import export menu. And under import, we have a generic option for tabular data CSV. So you can bring any number of arbitrary CSVs in to this data set, so long as they have an ID field which keys them to the correct bore record. So I'm going to do this for each of the data sets. So geology, again, we get this mapping table. Let's just check on the data tab that it's come in OK. It looks fine. So back to mappings, I map the ID to location ID from and to, map to the same in Groundhog, from and to. And then you don't need to map anything else. Lithology and description can just be imported as is. That then creates a geology table within this subfolder called data tables. And we'll go ahead and do the same for the sample data. Open the CSV, just eyeball that data. You can see we have an ID of from and a two and a sample type. So we know we can map location ID and the from and two depths for the samples. 
sample type can just come in as is. So now we have a samples table. And let's just bring in finally that strength test CSV file. Just eyeball this. You'll note here we only have strength tests for borehole one. And these are depth and a strength value. So let's map location ID to the ID field. And then depth is just a depth rather than a from and to. So these are point values or spot values. Strength just comes in as is. Click apply. So we now have the borehole collar information here. And we have the three data tables. You can open one of these up and change the mappings at any time. You can't edit the data in here, but you can change the mappings. So if you need to change the data, first do that in Excel or the text editor. OK, so let's just throw these into 3D just to see what we've imported. So let's add the boreholes as a layer to the 3D scene. Initially, these just appear as locations with a borehole stick and a label. And we need to then click on the settings button to choose which field we want to display. So I'm first going to ramp up this thickness a bit so we can see it easier. Then here we can map into any one of the tables. So I'm going to pick geology. And then within that table, lithology. Close that and you can see the data. So that's the basic import of borehole data. In the next video, I will show you how to display this data as a borehole log.